All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a really beautiful Sunday morning. It's about uh, 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, so a uh, quick shout out and a welcome to anybody and everybody who's tuning in to watch this today. Uh, this episode of the Alpaca 2-9er was brought to you by this Lego Stormtrooper. I kind of found that on the floor. Little buddy just sort of left it in the hallway and I kicked it down. So I was like, hey, all right, <clears throat> enough of that silly nonsense. So um, really, really beautiful day. Uh, yesterday wasn't quite as nice it was a little on the cool side and and very windy and cloudy uh today not a cloud in the sky the sun's already shining and uh it's looking like it uh, might be a day to just sit and relax in a lawn chair in the backyard and maybe do some reading I'm by myself for most of today, which is actually good because the last three days have been just really hectic in terms of uh, looking after little buddy and stuff. I, I mean, it's it's that way when you're dealing with four-year-olds, man. Like, they can be a handful of the best of times. So enough about that. Uh, let's get on with uh, Stock Lock Sunday. After I take a very generous swill of coffee. So I was digging in the yard the other day <clears throat> on the far side of the garage. It's kind of the no man's land. It's a dead zone. Nothing really, but it's it's a lot of weeds and stuff. So I like cleared out all the old weeds from last year and, you know, burnt everything. So, and I was doing some digging around and I found an ancient, no, well, it wasn't ancient. It was... Uh, you know, maybe been buried for, I don't know, close to 20 years uh, based on uh, a pop cam that I found buried next to it and, you know, some uh, bits of garbage and stuff. So uh, this core right here is what I found in the remains of the knob set. And this is obvious. This has been uh, cleaned up. I had to replace the back screw cap. It had uh, the steel uh tailpiece inside it had corroded such that it basically melded with the cap and it was all ugly and stuff was still able able to save the pin and the spring from the back though they were in surprisingly good shape um <clears throat> so yeah i i uh and the lock was just full of gunk too just full of gunk um so I pulled it out uh, and uh, proceeded to strip it apart and clean it as best I can. And I, this is this was the uh, first uh, Schlage style key that I saw hanging up on my little uh, collection of keys there. So I grabbed that. Now, uh, this is a, a six pin uh, core, and. Uh, Chamber number six was already empty, but because it had filled with gunk, it over time had become corroded such that this chamber is no longer viable. I did try to clean it out to see if I could, uh, you know, kind of get it up to snuff and it just was not to be. Uh, chamber number five, the driver pin has jammed just up right about here-ish. And it's it's not coming out. There's uh, some corrosion, so it's the the driver's basically welded in there. So this lock is actually just down to four functioning chambers, and uh, you know it uh, you know works well enough. It actually doesn't work too bad once it got all cleaned up, get all polished up. And uh, I did replace all the guts, all the, the springs, the driver pins, and of course the, the key pins to, to match this profile. So if we're only going off of, that's not uh, especially tough bidding. So uh, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, rake this lock. Uh, I haven't even tried yet so i figured I'd, I'd save that for stock lock sunday don't worry i i have a stock lock coming too that that's coming in a minute oh my goodness that's great coffee 
All right, so we're going to get into the, the bag of picks here. And I have the strangest feeling that we'll go with the flat bar and we'll try the Sparrows Octo Rake with the, you know, the uh, Sparrows uh, Thin Bar or Flat Bar, whatever you want to call it. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called the Thin Bar, but I just call it a Flat Bar. All right, so we'll uh, just kind of go in easy here. I'm not expecting this to be super difficult. I mean, the bidding is fairly favorable, and we're only trying to nail four chambers here yeah there we go so that came open without a fight so yeah there is uh this is a, a schlage core or or a clone some kind of schlage clone that had been buried out behind uh, my garage for i don't know roughly 20 years and uh yeah so we brought that back to life yeah all right so uh, just put that aside for a minute there. Moving on to Stock Lock Sunday. Today for Stock Lock Sunday, I have for you a Westlock. This is a deadbolt cylinder. Now, I know the Kiwi probably doesn't show up super well there. It actually does have a, a profile, as you can see by the, the key there. Not super, super tough bidding. Although that uh, low cut in the back bugs me a bit. That could make it a little tough. Um, I have never picked this lock. This is just a lock that's been in my collection. Uh, one of the major reasons I kept it, and I kind of have a thing for uh, original keys uh, with the lock. And this is actually a pretty good looking key. And it's uh, a pretty beefy key too. Um, this is... <clears throat> perhaps not the best made lock. It's got like a, a cheap sort of, I don't know, cast, uh, funny looking pot metal. I don't know what that is. I mean, it's definitely a steel of some kind, but, uh, the back of this, like you can see the casting marks and everything. It, uh, perhaps not the most expensive lock, uh, with a stainless plug. So yeah, anyways, enough of the jibber jabber. Let's, uh, let's go in, let's go in dry and, uh, see if we can beat this bad guy too. And, uh, I already got the octo rake out. So, uh, let's just, uh, just go with it. Oh, that went without a fight. All right. So yeah. All right. That was perhaps not the hardest pick ever, but uh, there you go. This is a uh, vintage Westlock deadbolt cylinder uh, with uh, at least one of its original keys. And I have one more, one more uh, small. So uh, I was over at uh, my good friend and mentor Badgers last night, and she had found this in her travels um, and she liked the logo, thought I would like the logo, and she was right about that, and decided to pass it on down to me. So I have no idea what that logo uh, is, what it's from. Here, I'm going to try to get a really good picture. If anybody actually, man, I, you know, I just can't get a good focus on that. If anybody out there uh, recognizes this logo and could tell me uh, who made this lock, uh, I do know one thing around the uh, around the body here. It has 165 made in USA stamped on it. So and it's uh, not the most terrible lock in the world. It's going to go in the collection. Uh, haven't been able to pick it so far. I'm not even going to bother trying. I have a lot of difficulty with this Y1 keyway. It's perhaps not the easiest keyway for me to work with. 
So if anybody recognizes that, if you could tell me uh, who the manufacturer of this lock is, I would be uh, eternally grateful. So that's all we have for Stock Lock Sunday. Um, I think I'm going to get my other instructional on uh, back shimming and hand filing a key on the go today because I got the house all to myself. So I'm going to uh, finish this coffee and mill about a bit and we'll get that on the go. So y'all have a great day. Um, oh yeah. Uh, for those of you who are religious, happy Easter. I don't know if it's actually today or tomorrow. I don't really celebrate Easter or anything like that. So, but <clears throat> happy Easter to all of you out there who are celebrating Easter. Uh, I know there will be many great dinners associated with that. So uh, wear pants with a little bit of space. Give yourself a little bit of extra room for all that turkey and ham or whatever it is that you're eating. And we'll catch you guys uh, really soon here on the next video. All right, bye now.